Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm Zias Caravalla from ZK Research, and I'm here at Veeam 2025 in San Diego. It's Veeam's uh, annual user conference. I'm with Emily Tejas, the field CTO for Veeam, uh, and returning ZCaster. Yes, thank yeah. you for having me. Yeah, now, uh, Emily, uh, just talk about your role at Veeam. Yeah, sure. So, so right now I focus in on working with customers, with partners on developing all of our not only product integrations with partnerships, but then also bringing any of that feedback to our product management team. So that way if there's something a customer really wants to see or be done differently, I'm helping them to provide all of that information so that way it goes into our next R&D cycle. Yeah, now the last time I talked to you was at RSA, mm -hmm. and I just sat in your session on cyber, yes. which is interesting because by all accounts, uh, I don't care whose numbers you use, you are the market leader in backroom recovery or data resiliency, whatever, whatever you want to call it, but that's not really cyber. So do you consider Veeam a cyber vendor? I or, do. Yeah. I, think, I think in some way, shape, or form, right, when we think about you know, when it comes to an incident response or the common incident response life cycle, you have to go through this entire process of preparation, uh, actually looking at and understanding, you know, monitoring and analytics, what's happening within our environment. And then you drive down all the way to the recovery aspect, right? So when you have a cyber incident, you have to go through this entire process. And the last process is going to be recovery, where that's where Veeam plays a large role. And I think for us as an organization, especially this year, we made some significant strides in helping our enterprise customers as well as our mid-market customers really understand what does their incident response look like, especially when it comes to, you know, how do they handle certain breaches versus a ransomware uh, incident that uh, could take place if they find ransomware artifacts, and essentially really building out that communication and the cyber incident response framework for yeah. them. Yeah, so the response is where you're strong and so mm -hmm. in order to recovery. And it's uh, interesting that I guess if everybody could protect themselves, you'd have no business. But right, yeah, right. but uh, but I think uh, in the morning keynote on it, your CEO said 75% of the companies were breached, uh, a number of them multiple times. Right. And so I guess there's no shortage uh, yeah, of, no, of business coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and even last year, right, we made an acquisition with Coveware, yeah. who, who leads the industry when it comes to helping organizations that have been hit by ransomware that are now going through a process of now negotiating with these threat actors, okay? How do we go through this process? Who has hands-on keyboards? Yeah, so, so, to talk so dive to them? deep on Cover. I thought that was an interesting acquisition. Uh, it's a little bit. Um, uh, 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 it's an adjacency to what you do, but mm -hmm. it's very related to what you do. So what is Cover and why was it important to add to the Veeam portfolio? Oh no, absolutely. So Cover was actually founded in 2018. Um, so Bill Siegel and his team, essentially, they looked at how the industry was handling ransomware at that time, and they said, we need to do it differently. Because so essentially, it was somebody got hit with ransom, there was a lot of shame that went around with that, and they wanted to keep it quiet, and the way for them to keep it quiet was to pay yeah. and for Bill he's a like, lot of companies just pay exactly yeah. and Bill's like that is not the way that we should be doing doing these things right because all we're doing is we're just funneling and we are giving that information or we're giving money to these threat actors to continue to develop this business so he wanted to take it a step further and he brought in some of the smartest brightest people from all different um, backgrounds right ex FBI investigators we have somebody that have uh, been uh, lawyers for cybersecurity um, for and then we also have even even you know own hostage negotiators from some other three letter uh, type of industries right so we brought in some of the best and brightest that know what it's like to deal with something under pressure that can go in and help these customers not negotiate for a shorter or a smaller payment but help negotiate for time because that's what's the most essential piece where when an organization has been impacted by ransomware they don't know what to do, and so then they kind of get nervous, and they immediately go into this, let's just do a payment versus uh, going through our entire process. Yeah, ransomware is one of those funny things, too, that it's a little bit like uh, when you get the spam toll messages. If you pay it once, you know you're going to get it again. Right. right. So now, um, while you are a uh, cyber company, uh, I think what makes Veeam unique is the ecosystem you have around you, right? Yes. And so you do participate in the recovery but and the remediation but something's still out there trying to warn companies and so right. you know that's where you think of the traditional palo altos and the crowd strikes and so uh, you announced crowd strike at this event as yes, a partner but you but your ecosystem is much bigger than that 
Oh. And so can you talk about some of the more meaningful partnerships, why CrowdStrike, and how you work with them to help enterprise protect themselves? Absolutely. So so I think, you know, Veeam's been known for building out these large partnership ecosystems for forever. I mean, that's where software defined. It's been our go-to play. Um, and it's the same with security, right? You go into an enterprise organization, they've made significant investments into these security partnerships, whether it's Palo Alto, CrowdStrike, Splunk, et cetera. Last thing we want to do is go in there and say, no, stop using that one and you need yeah. to use something else, right? So we looked at it as a, a partnership, right? So for the last year or so, we've had our security alliances team that has been formulating vendor-ready applications that are available in their own marketplaces through Veeam, where we can actually send any of the information that we're collecting directly into the security vendor of their choosing. And right now we have over 65 yeah. security partnerships CrowdStrike was announced today, of course, as being one of those that we're now going to be integrating with from um, log scale within Falcon. And then, of course, uh, last quarter or last year, we announced Palo Alto, and we are one of the first ones to integrate with their XIAM platform, as well as delivering an uh, application for XOR. So customers, no matter what they utilize from Palo Alto, they had freedom of choice. Yeah. I'm never sure how to pronounce X XSIM. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, is it XIAM? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, but that is important. In fact, um, I think more and more customers are shifting to uh, the, they're trying to platformize their security. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that there's not one security rule, right. vendor to rule them all, you, by being able to participate in that platformization effort, do make it easier. Uh, for customers. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a key part of a defense yeah. in depth, right? Yeah. Having an approach of you want to have multiple layers of security, just like you want to have multiple layers of recovery with Veeam. So it really helps those organizations to be able to uh, continue on with that strategy. Yeah. And in the session I just sat in, I did notice uh, you talked a lot about some AI capabilities that you have. Mm -hmm. And so can you just, uh, uh, for audience here, uh, go down deep, or dive deep in a little. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, some of them are meaningful ones. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So we looked at security. AI is the way. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. You can't go anywhere without no. saying AI no. at least yeah. once, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so obviously there was a lot of different ways in which we wanted to take the information Veeam is generating and provide meaningful feedback to organizations. One of those is through our AI malware detection engine. So essentially training our engine to understand when we have large amounts of changes in data, when we have encryptions, when we find things like onion links or ransomware notes inside of the data itself, being able to identify that early and often to a customer so that way they know that that has now taken place. Uh, so that has been, uh, actually has since evolved for the last two versions of our product and we just continue to train this engine so that way customers can have confidence in the backups that they're receiving that it's not gonna contain anything malicious or suspicious uh, when they need to go perform a clean recovery. Yeah, and that's interesting too because um, often people, when they get breached, they recover the data and if the malware is in the data, then of course you're just recovering back right. to a bad state. And so your AI can actually understand those things that are in the data. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Now, is that, was, would that even been possible without AI? I think it would be, but there would be a lot of tooling that would need to happen as well as you would see probably a lot more involvement from the security teams to go through and start flagging and searching through that data itself, or maybe even just spinning up that machine itself inside of instant recovery and then scanning through it with their own AV tools, or et cetera. So at least we give them a precursor of We've already found something that's suspicious. It's in this log file, it's encrypted data, it's an onion link, et cetera. Go do your next steps within your cyber playbook to go and understand what should we be looking at next? How do we clean it? How do we verify that this incident isn't something that has impacted our ecosystem globally? And uh, the last thing that you mentioned that I wanted to discuss was the security compliance analyzer. Yes. Which is different than what you just talked about. I thought that was interesting because um, you know, compliance is still very difficult to do, yeah. right? And especially in the regulated verticals. And so how does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So so Security Compliance Analyzer has been uh, new versions from the Best Practices Analyzer. And essentially what we're doing is we're just taking all of that information that we would see as far as like how you would traditionally harden a Windows server or a Linux server, uh, Linux server having items like 
multi-factor authentication be turned on, um, as well as looking at IOCs, indicators of compromise, right? What are some malicious toolkits that we know threat actors typically might use. And maybe it's not malicious toolkits, but maybe they're actually, you know, tools that are known to our ecosystem like Team Viewer. Team Viewer can be a very good uh, program that everybody utilizes, but if it's being utilized for somebody to do something bad and you now find it living on the land or living on a new server where it wasn't supposed to be, how can we then flag uh, our internal security teams to say, hey, we are finding these other tools being sprung up on other servers, which could be a good indicator that we have a threat actor within the environment that is either stealing or exfiltrating information, uh, and we want to be able to put a stop to that. So, so the best practices are that security compliance analyzer not only hardens and looks at the Veeam environment itself, but it also takes into um, consideration some of those other toolkits that we see from, from threat actors and what they utilize. Yeah, and so that really moves you more into the SOC tools as well, right? Mm -hmm. Where historically I would have thought of you, like again, on the resiliency side or back in recovery, but not really as a SOC tool. Right. Uh, but more and more, I think that those worlds are coming together. I yeah, no, absolutely. And yeah, I think yeah. that's mostly due to Cobra because yeah. they use their own forensic uh, tools to do investigations after an incident's yeah. taken place. So for them, it was recon scanner. And we just took the information that they're pulling and was able to actually formulate that and put it to use for all of our customers running the yeah. backup replication. And, and do you think a lot of stuff you're doing now has become um, I guess the value of it's been raised with AI, right? AI, everybody talks about data being the new gold and things like that, but um, I, I'm not gonna say you could have, I guess, ignored some of the things in the past, but uh, you know, a data breach now could have significantly more uh, bigger impact than, than before because of AI, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. 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 and I, I mean, so Cobra does their own quarterly reports and essentially they actually last quarter they saw 87% of the organizations they worked with had exfiltrated data versus the 85% that had encryption. So more data was exfiltrated than actually encryption and essentially it's going into those threat actors. Your tools, your security tools are getting so good at stopping the encryption that they're just going straight for exfiltrating the data. And if you think about that as a as a compliance or yeah. as a data sprawl event, I mean, nothing nothing breaks compliance or contributes to data sprawl than a threat actor exfiltrating your data and that now living somewhere else. Yeah, and what people are worried about the quantum coming to is steal now, decrypt later. Right. Right, and so that's another, uh, uh, you know, you gotta be quantum ready, I guess, even today, even though quantum's not here, so. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, last question. Uh, what's on the roadmap for you guys? Uh, as, much as, you, as much as you can talk about. <laughs> yeah, no, so we made our big announcement yeah, uh, yeah. earlier this morning. Of but I want to know more. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> so, so come to tomorrow's session, okay. right? And for, if this posts before then, make sure you go register yeah. on veeam.com. You could go and catch anything yeah. on demand. Um, but we're going to be doing some demos tomorrow and actually showcasing the new CDP that we have coming within the Veeam data platform, as well as Veeam intelligence, some cool things that we're doing around Anthropic. MCP, um, so kind of bring your own LLM so that way we can kind of leverage that data. And then of course the Veeam software appliance in version yeah. 13, all on Linux, that's yeah. gonna be very exciting. Yeah, the software appliance of that was uh, pretty exciting as well. And just, so let's wrap on that. Let's just talk about the software appliance and why that's important. And, sure, yeah, yeah. so, so uh, essentially we're giving customers, again, freedom of choice, right? So you can continue to have Veeam, which is deployed on the Windows system and uh, it's what customers is know and love and that's fine but we're also giving customers another option to have Veeam fully deployed through a Veeam software appliance where we will manage all the security updates for them. It's fully built off of Linux. And uh, on top of that, right, you get the form factor of your choosing. So if you're a Cisco shop and an HP shop or whatever yeah. it may be, you can choose how you want to have Whatever that hardware deployed. you want. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's exciting. So, uh, all right, Emily, anything you want to add? Uh, no, this, this is great. Yeah, Thanks no, it's good. Me. It was a uh, this, uh, I've been to a number of Vimons, and this uh, was the most uh, kind of action-packed day one keynote that I've seen. You guys packed a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, especially on the security side, so that's good to see. Yeah. So. All right, so on behalf of Emily Teas, CTO, field CTO, CTO. of Veeam, <laughs> um, Zia Scaraval from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of ZCast.